Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are looking at another dev blog, but this one is slightly different. It isn't actually for the new updates groundbreaking, instead it's for the new battle pass. Now remember, the current battle pass does end on the 27th, so you've got about 9 days to be able to get all of the points that you need, uh, to be able to get all the levels and so on to get the rewards that you want. And uh, the when the next battle pass starts, since they start basically one after the other, obviously we're going to have a new set of vehicles with us and the first one which is announced is the PT-658. This is a PT boat which is coming to the US at rank 3 so it'll be useful for uh, events and also it'll be useful for other things um, you know for dailies and also specials to do which will be really nice and also part of the new season. It should also hopefully be a premium as well so it'll give you a little bit of a boost to everything going on. Let's find out the history. The PT-658 is one of those vehicles that finds its birth in World War II once again. Basically in the midst of the war, the American Navy was in dire need of fast and also agile torpedo boats, and the Elko shipyards, the main supplier of the US Mosquito fleet, very quickly ceased to cope with the growing volume of orders. So the company management was obliged to transfer the documentation for the production of boats to two more shipyards, the Huckins Yacht uh, Co uh, Corporation from Jacksonville, Florida, and also Higgins Industries from New Orleans. The 78-foot boats at the Higgins Industry shipyards were built entirely of wood, which somewhat reduced their speed, but the seaworthiness and maneuverability of the series remained unchanged. That's why we have the Higgins boats in the coastal tree for America. Most of the boats entered units of the United States Navy in the Pacifics and were intensively used against Japan. A significant part of the boats were delivered under Lend-Lease, and of the 221 built boats, 52 were transferred to the USSR, and under the 24 to Great Britain. This may show that we're going to get some of these PT boats to uh, the USSR or Britain in the future. I hope so, because they're really, really fun coastal vehicles. The PT-658 was also supposed to be lend-leased to the USSR, but the time of construction, which was the 30th of July 1945, the war in Europe had already ended and the delivery was cancelled. The boat did not participate in hostilities and was used as an auxiliary and transport vessel. And in 1958, the boat was bought into private ownership. And in 1993, it was donated to a non-profit organization by veterans and enthusiasts for restoration. By 2005, the PT-658 uh, torpedo boat was completely rebuilt and is currently one of two fully operational PT series patrol boats. The boat takes part in shows and is currently displayed as a living exhibit at the Vigor Industrial Shipyard in Portland, Oregon. So it's one of those uh, vehicles which didn't do too much during the war, but what it is really good for is actually telling everybody the heritage of the PT boats and especially the Elkos, which is something that is very important uh, when it comes to history, trying to keep it alive in some different ways. So when we look at the PT-658, it's very similar to other Elkos that we already have in-game. If you're looking for a completely brand new experience with this Battle Pass vehicle, you're not going to get it. But instead, what you're going to be able to get is an experience which uh, should already be have been experienced, but from a premium point of view. And generally, this is good because it means if people are fans of the US coastal tech tree, uh, then you can sink your teeth into another vehicle vehicle and use it to progress pretty far in the tech tree up to rank 4 out of rank 5 which is quite nice and uh, be able to unlock a bunch of uh, machines uh, so you can kind of enjoy them and at the same time if you are new to the tech tree then the premium itself can actually give you a, a decent uh, look at what a lot of the tech tree vehicles are like so it can kind of train you into the role of how to play the Elkos. Now the Elkos in general are very good machines. Uh, 
Uh, they're incredibly fun to play, and they're very simple to play. And pretty much, you have really good speed, you normally have a decent armament. In the case of this one, it has access to a 40mm bofors on the back, which is very good. It also has two single 20s, and then two sets of dual 50 cals, plus a 37 on the front. So because the 40mm is on the back, what you basically want to do is, when you see an enemy, you want to point your backside at them and to just rat it at them with the bofors. This means that it will be very hard for them to hit you and very easy for you to hit them um, because they'll be coming into you. And then you can just keep hitting them with the bofors over and over and over again. And then you can leave the rest of the guns to provide AA support because of the fact that your machine is going to get hounded by aircraft. At the same time, it does get the four torpedoes, that is classic on the Elko class, and uh, for me, I use these torpedoes to be able to zone areas of the map, it works incredibly well, and also, this thing gets the bazooka rockets, it gets 16 unguided M4 bazookas, they're not really needed, um, they're, they're not great, they're not going to really help you, they're a little bit of fun and they make a great noise, that's, that's really about it uh, when it comes to the vehicle itself. But what you're getting here is uh, something which is very similar to other Tech Tree vehicles, if not basically the same, but it's also giving you a familiar experience because of that and a premium experience on top of that. And one of the things, at least for me, that I've done over the years uh, when it comes to naval in War Thunder is I do the events. And one of the strongest lineups, in my opinion, for the events is the 301 for the US. And with the addition of the PT-658, especially being a rank 3, maybe now there is a contender for that lineup at 27, because at least on the dev server, this thing was 27. So it would mean that uh, it would be a little bit um, easier to play at lower BRs. Maybe it'll go up against more coastal stuff instead of destroyer stuff and have a bit more fun of a time at it. But the uh, the armament when it comes to the Bofors, as I've talked about how to you know play it, it is also probably the best gun at these types of BRs. And the reason is is because you have a good uh, range. Uh, you know you can fire over two kilometers, which is very nice, and also at the same time, you don't really have to worry about reload, um, it just constantly keeps going, you just have to worry about overheating, and even to overheat it, you have to fire the gun a ridiculous amount of times. And uh, from there, uh, also, you, the damage output of the gun is incredibly good. So as long as you stay your distance away from enemies, you know, around about that two kilometer mark, you're going to do tons of damage to them, and they might struggle quite a lot to be able to do any damage to you. So it's just a really nice setup on uh, the Elko. The survivability of this these machines is pretty much zero. So if you get caught, you're going to die. Um, so you might as well just try and plug as much damage as you can. And it does happen, don't worry, uh, where you will just be zooming along and then you'll be on one of the naval maps where there's a bunch of rocks around it and bang, uh, they just annihilate you. It is just kind of how it is. You, you'll get used to it over time if you play this thing. But it should be a lot of fun, you know. It's uh, low survivability, high speed, decent firepower and those three those two factors out of three uh, make a pretty fun vehicle and uh, since it is already similar to vehicles that are already in the game it means that making lineups and also uh, playing you know uh, US coastal should be pretty easy to do. US Coastal is probably my favorite set of uh, coastal machines just because they're just fast, they're powerful, and they're just fun to fly around in. And for me, when it comes to naval, I play arcade. It's the fast run around mode to have a bit of fun in. And it works extremely well um, because of the fact that I play stuff like the Elkos. Anyway, as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, BRFC15, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, and then Carl Kinn, Barine, Lafouche, and also Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.